Okay, so we're getting ready to flush a raccoon hide, and this is the fat that I just pulled off of the hide by hand and put into this bowl. And we can render this down to be used as a tallow for many things from fuel for a grease lamp to waterproofing our boots, caring for our metal and knives and things like that. Anything that needs to be protected, this grease or this fat will work perfect and it's also a very good fuel. So as we're flushing this hide and getting all the scrapings off of it, any big chunks of fat we get, we're gonna throw them in this bowl so we can render it down. Look at that big chunk right there. We'll save all of that to render down. Another big fat chunk right there. There's a bunch right there we're going to get here in just a minute. If I drop a couple small pieces, I'll pick those up after the fact. Right now I'm just interested in getting these great big ones. Old, old cabin right here. Let's see if we can't scrounge a couple things out of it real fast. Bird nests in here and all kinds of stuff. All right, let's see here. Got all kinds of pieces and chunks of metal and coat hangers. and Okay, here's an old piece of baling wire right here. I'm going to grab that. And now I'm looking for, there's a good sized glass jar right there. Another glass jar over here. A small glass jar on top of this old refrigerator here. Looks like a rat nest inside that. Holy cow. What a mess. Some old mason jars and stuff in here as well. Completely broke down. Well, the only jar I see right now that's about the right size for what I want to use is this old one on top of this refrigerator. I don't know what the heck's inside that thing, but. We'll see if we can get the lid off that, and that's the one we're going to use. Let's take this back to the camp. We can come back here and scrounge later. There's a mountain of trash in here we can scrounge from, that's for sure. Old shotgun shells in here. And this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about, guys. When I'm talking about wandering up on something in the middle of nowhere, and right there on the floor is a shotgun shell. It's spent, but if I had the primers and the powder, that's a shootable shell. And that's why I talk so much about that 21st century long hunter mentality. Because you can wander upon stuff like that in the middle of nowhere. I mean, this is on my property. It's not in the middle of nowhere. But this cabin has been abandoned for ages. Forever. It actually had a second story on it at one time. And we'll take a look at that on another day. But this place is crazy. Look at the age on that wallpaper. There's a ton of old stuff in here. Get that old raincoat hanging there. Okay, so now what I'm looking for is some material, preferably 100% cotton. There's an old t-shirt right here. <laughs> Gathered cuffs. Who knows how old that thing is? Not t-shirt, but dress shirt. The label's bad in it, so. There's no way to tell whether that's 100% cotton or not. And I'd really like to find something that was cotton, if it was possible. But, you know, even that rat nest material would work for a wick. And that's kind of what I'm looking for, some type of a material I can use for a wick. This old stuff right here, this, like, pillow ticking. That stuff right there is definitely 100% cotton, as old as that is makes great patch for a black powder gun or for you know a 12 gauge 21st century long hunter mentality loading that thing as a muzzle loader this stuff makes great patch we're going to try to take some of this and make a wick out of it old and rotten but i'm sure it's still going to work
Okay, our next step is we've got the possum fat, all of that fat that we collected off of that possum hide in a two quart Dutch oven over there. We're going to render that down to liquefy it and make it a lard or a tallow. So we've got to heat it up slowly to render it down. I don't want to get it too close to the fire. I'm just letting it warm up right now and as I adjust my fire, we'll start rendering it down. Stay with me guys. Okay guys, while we are rendering that fat down, let's look at this mattress ticking or pillow ticking that we got here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to find a couple strips right here. They don't have to be real long. Call that one. And we'll call that two. And we'll call that one three. And we're going to braid these together into a wick. I'll set this other stuff aside. The rest of that stuff, great char cloth, everything else. I mean, nothing wrong with that stuff to be utilized. And like I said, this is trash. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of hang this off of this piece of wire I've got right here that I use to break hides and things over. And I'm just going to kind of tie it into the knot right here, just like this. And this is just to hold it temporarily. So I got a place to hang it while I'm braiding it. Basically all this is for. Okay. This over here. Alright. And then I'm just gonna take this and braid it. Very simple to braid. Left over right, right over left, left to the center, right to the center. It's really, really, really simple but it'll give me a pretty good thick wick when I'm done. That's got those fibers compressed so they can suck that oil up inside there. And I'll have a good cotton heavy duty wick when I'm done. Okay guys, um, next thing we wanna do is we wanna look at this jar and this piece of wire. I've got that wick right here in my pocket. This jar, the lid's rusted a little bit on it. It's not got a good seal on it anymore. Makes it even a better candidate for what I was thinking about using it for anyway, which is a lamp. It's got some seeds in it that appear to be some type of bean. Are they viable? Who knows? You know, they, they could be. The only way you're going to find out is to plant them, but it's just funny to find something like that, stored seeds inside an old cabin like that. You know, you can tell what they were saving. You know, they were saving seeds to grow more food for themselves. And I think that's an important lesson for us to learn today as far as self-reliance goes as well. So now that we've got that jar emptied out, I'm not going to bother cleaning this thing up. It's just a small vase-shaped jar. What I'm going to do with this wire is I'm going to use this wire to create a stand for this wick so that the wick kind of stands up in the middle a little bit. I've got this wick pretty long. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and I'm going to push it down inside of the jar, the fattest end like this, and compress it in there a little bit. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to tight wire this thing just a little bit, put a circle in it so I can still pull the wick through it if I need to. And then I'm going to cut part of this wire off with my multi-tool and use that as a stand inside to keep that wick upright. Okay guys, so what I'm doing now is I'm just trying to sweep some coals over into this keyhole area of this fire pit and look at this fat and you can see the liquid in there where that's rendering down now and that's what we're looking for. I'm kind of keeping it off direct flame because I don't want it to burn and when those flames die down I'll put it over those hot coals. Okay the other thing that I'm doing here is I've moved this jar that we're going to use over here by the fire. I don't want it to catch fire what I want it to do is I want it to get warmed up because I don't want to pour hot oil into cold glass and have it break. Okay, we've poured quite a bit of that oil in there and we've saturated this wick. 
and light that up. Okay, we're filled all the way to the top now. This is the second time I'm lighting it. I blew it out the first time so I could fill it back up. Light it up here and let it catch. And you guys can see the kind of lighting that that will provide as it begins to catch further and further on the top of that wick. Okay guys, well, you know we made a pretty serviceable little grease lamp or oil lamp today with just some junk that we found around and a raccoon that we had harvested on the trap line. Works pretty good. It's going to burn for a good long time, no doubt. There's a lot more oil left in there to be rendered out of that fat and when that fat's rendered completely down and you've got nothing but, you know, the crispy stuff left over, those are cracklings. You can eat those. Definitely good for you, especially in a long-term self-reliant situation. You need that fat anyway. You'd go ahead and eat that stuff. This is going to work out. This candle is going to burn for hours and hours and hours, this lamp. I appreciate you guys joining me for this video. I appreciate everything you do for me, for my school, for my family. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can.